So we're good to go? Good to go. Okay, perfect. Um, well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jada Karamursal. Um, I'm a lecturer in modern Middle Eastern history at the uh, department uh, here at SOAS, um, as well as the convener for the MA uh, history uh, program. And I believe, I, I'm not sure if they joined us yet, but um, we have um, Laura Messi um, with us, or will be joining us in, in a few minutes, um, a recruitment officer who can answer your uh, specific recruitment related questions. And we also will have Ekram Karim, who's, also, who's a student ambassador and uh, who can um, answer your uh, student life related questions. Um, and I will be um, um, in, you know, in the, in the next half hour or so, um, I will be uh, giving you, try to um, give you a, a brief introduction uh, to, to SOAS, um, explain um, kind of what we do uh, here and um, what is unique about what, uh, what we do at SOAS, um, as well as the department and um, overall um, the uh, program um, as well. And um, I mean, this is the first thing I will do. And um, um, following that, I will be um, uh, speaking a little bit about the program structure and uh, your options, um, program options. And um, just really, you know, the aim is to give you a, a glimpse of what it is like to study uh, history at the at MA level um, here uh, at SOAS. Um, and then we will just open up uh, for your questions um, and um, a discussion uh, will, will follow. And in the meantime, uh, please, as I, as I go along, please feel free to um, type your questions in the chat box. What I will do, I, I won't be able to see them as, as I make, uh, as, I, as I talk, um, but I will go back to, to them and um, answer them as much as, um, as I, possible as I can. Um, so as um, some of you um, already know, um, SOAS was uh, founded in uh, 1916 as a graduate level uh, teaching research institution. So its original name was actually SOS, um, a School of Oriental Studies, and Africa was added to it a couple decades later in 1935. Initially, its primary aim was to tra uh, train uh, colonial officers, the British Empire that was sent out to um, different colonial posts across the globe. But that aim was rather uh, quickly dismantled by uh, SOAS scholars, SOAS uh, historians uh, particularly, um, emphasized as early as uh, 1950s the importance of studying the history of Asian and African countries from their own perspective, in their own terms, and um, um, not through the framework of imperial history, imperial learning. Um, so um, in, in that's, uh, SOAS is a pioneer in, in its history, traditionally, um, in its quest to look at um, focus on different parts of the world um, from, from their own perspective. And I think that's one of the things that makes um, the uh, institution, particularly the department, a unique uh, one in every way. So um, this uh, still, uh, this quest still uh, characterizes SOAS uh, today, um, as I said, particularly the, uh, the history department um, and uh, makes, uh, makes it a special program. Um, SOAS has uh, the only history department in Britain and as well as the US that teaches history from the perspective of Asia, Africa, um, and uh, the uh, Middle East. So that means the department has the highest concentration of specialist faculty working uh, in the, on these regions. In any history program, any history department, you would have perhaps um, one or two um, um, uh, faculty members who work on these regions. Um, it's kind of dominated by, uh, by uh, Western history um, 
uh, pretty much without uh, exception uh, throughout the programs um, in, in, in these countries and, and uh, most other places as well. And SOAS's uh, research facilities correspond with that uh, concentration. Um, SOAS library is, is, you can see here the picture, um, a picture of the library, um, is one of the world's leading uh, academic um, research libraries for the study of Asia, uh, Africa, and the Middle East. And um, uh, if you don't know where SOAS is located, it's right at the heart of Bloomsbury. When you consider the uh, SOAS library, uh, the, the strength of the SOAS library in combination with what's, what surrounds uh, uh, it's uh, what surrounds SOAS. We have uh, the um, Senate House Library. This is the central um, library of University of London, uh, which is literally next door to SOAS, um, as well as British Library, which is a 10 minutes walking distance. So in that sense, SOAS Library and SOAS as a research institution uh, can be called a research powerhouse in, in every way. Um, SOAS, uh, I mean, that SOAS was founded as a graduate level institution shapes who we are, um, what we do, uh, also at the uh, program level. Unlike many other institutions which started uh, with undergraduate teaching and then added on graduate uh, level programs, postgraduate study is and has always been at the heart of um, all teaching uh, we do um, here uh, at SOAS. Um, so currently um, there are uh, more than uh, 200 postgraduate programs running um, throughout the school and uh, much more than that, um, many more than that uh, in degree combinations um, as well. So these uh, give you um, an opportunity to study a subject in greater depth um, combined with rigorous training in history, historical methods, uh, which is done uh, primarily through our core module of uh, the program, Debating Past, Crafting Histories, a year-long course which provides this rigorous uh, training of the craft. But not only that, uh, these programs and program combinations also allow you to bring together other things, most notably languages. Um, which you can study as either as part of your degree um, or as open option modules in support or in connection uh, with your uh, coursework. You can also bring together interdisciplinary and interregional expertise. I will talk about uh, the program structure in a few minutes um, so you can see how it works uh, in practice as well. Um, what also makes SOAS um, a special place uh, uh, is its emphasis in um, engaging with larger issues um, in, in our world today. Um, it uh, really is, is an important um, um, feature. Um, SOAS scholars, including SOAS historians, work on a wide range of pressing issues. Uh, such as displacement, poverty, environment, um, and race, among other things. So for us, history is not something that has happened uh, and ended in the past, uh, but something that has uh, that continues, that has continuities, and has direct implications um, for the world uh, that we uh, live in um, today. Um, so in that, our graduates um, move on to, uh, to PhD programs here in the UK or the US or elsewhere to pursue um, academic careers, but also, in my sense, uh, is that increasingly so, um, they also pursue um, um, careers in policy-related areas, um, working for uh, governmental, intergovernmental organizations, non-governmental organizations as well. Uh, so there's that element to the, to the study of history uh, at SOAS um, uh, too. 
So this is a very um, concise um, introduction or background information um, for, for SOAS as a school and uh, for, for, for the department and the program um, um, in, in general. So now um, let us uh, move to, to take a closer look um, um, at, uh, and more detailed look um, into the uh, MA history programs and as well as the structures of, of those programs um, themselves. So there are currently two um, MA uh, history uh, programs uh, based in the history department. Uh, these are the first of these um, is the main um, MA uh, history uh, program. And the second one, which I will uh, speak in later in, in a few minutes, the MA history with intensive uh, language uh, study as a separate, connected but separate um, program. So uh, those of you who um, may have gone through the department webpage um, may have noticed that MA history pathways uh, existed uh, at, at, some, at some point, uh, which are the frameworks that asked, um, required students to have a specific regional focus. Um, you could write, uh, you could do coursework in, in African history, Middle Eastern history, in, in um, uh, East Asian, South Asian history, and write your dissertation in that specific, or in relation to specific, uh, that specific region. Um, uh, but um, as of this year, um, we dropped these uh, frameworks primarily to, to enable flexibility uh, with your course choices, but also um, facilitate uh, trans-regional, transnational research and coursework as well, uh, which I think, I mean, in my opinion, is the most exciting, one of the most exciting things that you can do um, here um, at SOAS. So you do not only uh, look at history, um, uh, at the history of Asian African countries from their own perspectives, but um, also look at the, um, uh, how these perspectives connected uh, to each other, interacted with each other, and we especially um, support and encourage uh, that type of um, approach and uh, to, to research and, and coursework and and, um, and um, dissertation writing um, as well. So uh, we no longer uh, have uh, regional uh, pathways, but that does not mean that you cannot focus on one specific region, of course. Um, it's a great flexibility on how you build, uh, build your um, uh, uh, program list of courses, a program of study um, in general. Um, so um, the MA history program, you see the details um, here on, on, on screen, um, taken as a full-time, um, on, on full-time basis, uh, it is a one-year program that consists of um, 180 cred credits in, uh, in uh, total. Um, um, 60 of these 180 credits is, is a dissertation, a beacon of, of both uh, uh, um, uh, programs, um, both uh, MA history, MA history and intensive language programs, um, which is a, a 10,000 word research project that is expected to build heavily on primary source um, research. And um, Another 30 credits um, for the core methodology course, Debating Pasts, uh, Crafting Histories. This is a year-long seminar that meets two or three hours each week and in many ways serves as the main hub for the MA history uh, cohort. Not so much this year, unfortunately, as uh, the teaching takes place um, uh, on, online, but normally it really does work as the meeting point for, um, for the entire group every week, and it really works well uh, in that sense. So in addition to the dissertation um, um, and the core module, um, you will need to complete 90 credit uh, worth of taught courses. Let me move on. Um, um, 
taught courses, um, which you can choose from various different uh, lists. You can see here, there's a list um, A of courses and B, and then uh, you have the open um, options. For list A courses, you can, here you can see um, a list of it. Um, not all of them may run next year, but they will be either way, they will be uh, replaced with equally interesting um, uh, um, options. Um, and um, the course, I mean, the, the uh, list A courses are um, um, mostly offered by the history department but um, also those that are strictly historical in content as well from other departments. There is a list B, which, uh, which contains um, almost entirely ancient classical history courses and languages, which um, is a very short list that, that uh, includes origins and development of yoga in, in ancient India, the Indian temple, the great tradition of Taoism, as well as um, such languages as uh, Sanskrit and, and Akkadian, uh, among others. Um, uh, and apart from these, um, which, uh, which constitutes, uh, to, to go back to the uh, structure, which constitutes the um, 60 or the 90 credits um, of taught courses required for the degree, um, you have uh, what are called the open um, option modules. Uh, these are basically all MA level um, courses offered throughout the school. And I put here, um, but that list is quite long. Um, and, and I put here only a few um, just to give you an idea. And again, not all of these courses may be running next year, um, but uh, like I said, they will be um, replaced by other um, uh, courses on offer that are um, equally relevant or, or interesting. So the remaining 30 credits required for the program, um, you can just fill uh, with, um, with for, for, from among the open options um, that you choose uh, from, from these uh, courses. And um, last but not least, um, you also have a large array of taught language courses that you can take as an open option module as well. Um, you, it doesn't have to be part of, of, of the degree. Uh, you can take them as open options. Uh, the list of language courses uh, is also pretty uh, long and comprises literally so many uh, languages of the regions that um, SOAS um, studies, Arabic, Persian, Japanese, Chinese, Zulu, Swahili, Yoruba, Bengali, Urdu, so on and so forth. So you have these options you can make uh, as a part of your coursework. Um, now that I mentioned um, languages, um, this uh, brings me um, to uh, the other, the second MA history program we offer uh, here at, at the history department. Um, it's a program in, in which where you study languages as part of your uh, degree. And um, uh, here, um, uh, you can see the available languages um, as Arabic, Japanese, Korean, etc. Uh, currently, um, unfortunately, the program is running only for Arabic, and I think perhaps Persian as well. I may be uh, mistaken about that uh, because of the COVID situation, um, because there are travel restrictions. So the, the summer schools, uh, as part of these uh, uh, programs. Um, had to be uh, suspended, but at least some of these uh, languages may be available um, later on if the situation, the circumstances um, allow. So um, you will have to just check back with us um, for updates in the coming months um, for the status status of, of these um, of these languages. So um, this is um, a two-year program um, that. Um, uh, has, that has the same course structure as MA history um, with, with um, 
added intensive language uh, study, um, uh, just both at SOAS and school, uh, school uh, as an institution abroad on top of added on top of uh, of the MA program. Um, so um, it um, it is basically the MA history program with the same requirements um, stretched over two years and has a, an intensive language study um, attached uh, to it. So um, differently from, from the MA history uh, program, uh, you need to complete 315 credits in total. Um, 120 of these would be um, taught courses the same amount as as, um, as as the MA history and 90 credits taught language courses, 45 credits of study abroad that language and 60 credits um, of of the of, uh, from the dissertation. So uh, for the year one um, core course debating pasts, uh, crafting histories applies to this program as well. You need to complete that uh, during your first year in the program. Um, and then uh, 30 credits of regional thematic courses, taught courses from the list A from history department or courses that are offered by the department um, or strictly historical, um, uh, I, I could say. And then, um, uh, combined with 60 credits of intensive language study um, at, at SOAS. Um, this uh, gives you enough uh, preparation. In like the, the, these programs are open to beginners as well. Um, even if you begin from the be you know, that, that year, um, that intensive language study prepares you for intensive um, study abroad um, um, for during the summer uh, at the summer school in an institution abroad. Uh, and when you come back uh, for your second year, uh, you follow up uh, with advanced um, uh, level language study, um, again, at, at SOAS, which really requires 30 credits more. And then uh, it's kind of reversed uh, the first year uh, you continue um, uh, doing your uh, regional thematic courses, uh, history courses, and open options, um, uh, and you need to complete 60 uh, credits um, of, um, of those. So you can see a, a, a chart of, of the requirements um, here. So um, the, uh, the common and uh, most important component um, of both programs, um, as uh, you may guess, uh, is the dissertation. It constitutes 25% of your final mark, and it equally um, requires 20, at least 25% of your attention, energy, uh, work uh, at, at the program. And, and for that, you, uh, you um, receive um, quite a bit of support in the form of not only the methodology course debating past, but also um, a, a dissertation workshop, as well as um, as well as uh, um, uh, independent research um, essay uh, course that you can actually um, write in preparation of, of of your dissertation. So dissertation actually uh, consists of two components. One is a dissertation plan, which uh, which is ten percent of of the of the mark, and then um, the dissertation itself, which is the 90% um, of the final uh, final mark. Um, as I said, it it is a major undertaking. Um, it, it it requires a lot of energy and 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 work. And in that sense, it may be a little daunting at first sight. But in my opinion, it is also the most enjoyable uh, part of the program. Um, where um, you yourself um, write history and make genuine uh, contribution um, to the um, to the field um, and to to our knowledge of history, and um, I think it's very rewarding, nourishing undertaking in um, every way. Um, I guess I mean this is the end of 
my overview, my presentation, my talk. Um, what I will do now um, is um, just um, stop sharing my screen so that I can see your questions. Um, and um, we can just open this up uh, for a discussion. And um, before I go um, um, stop sharing my screen, um, here is my name and my uh, email address. Please uh, feel free to reach out to me if you, I mean, you know, um, for for later questions, for later updates um, in the uh, in the coming months. Um, so I have um, here um, Chris's. Uh, question, independent research essay. Um, this is an exercise. Uh, basically, it is it is a medium length essay that you write um, at the end of the two teaching terms. It's uh, due at the beginning of the third term, which uh, begins normally uh, the uh, the um, end of April, beginning of uh, May. Um, which is associated one with one of the uh, one of the courses um, that you uh, that you take uh, during uh, your time here and um, write research and write your um, your um, essay in connection with that. But that's really more uh, in preparation for your dissertation research. It gives you an an, an opportunity to work on on uh, research related matters um the, the the document bases and and literature and uh then um just um uh kind of take it as a practice uh, for for dissertation writing um connor has a question if you do not pass the intermediate language examinations get put on a beginner's language course you be moved to the higher group uh, in the second year. Um, well, absolutely yes. Um, if if you start with as as a beginner, um, that is really for your for for your benefit in, in that sense. You don't really force, especially when you're doing coursework. Um, language study may be really, really demanding. Um, so um, by the time you come back from summer school, um, depending on your, I mean, how comfortable you are uh, with 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 your level of, of Arabic, you can uh, just you know jump up to an advanced level. Of course, in, you know in um, in connection or like you know have to discuss this with your with your language instructor. Um, and um, you decide together whether you, you feel comfortable with it, with doing that or not. But um, but absolutely, you can um, choose um, your level when you come back uh, from 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 summer abroad. Um, 